and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on tech we are of course broadcasting live straight out of stockholm sweden and we do the show each and every day at 8 a.m central european summertime guys i come to you like an atomic clock each and every day today we have a very important and juicy episode why because the e um, ecb european central bank came out with uh, new interest rates they are lowering it once again. Number two, we do have new quantitative easing from the ECB. And the whole euro area is now divided because this is not something that all countries that are part of the euro area really supported. So you will understand the magnitude of these events in this video. You will also understand the effect of this on cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and others. And hopefully we can get a better understanding of what is happening in the traditional finance space. And you remember yesterday we discussed Mr. Trump not being happy with the Fed. Well, guess what? He is not e happy today either because obviously he sees the euro area devaluing the euro, which makes it easier to export to other countries, including the US, while Trump is feeling that this is something that the US should do, that the US should have the lower interest rate so that the US can export more. So all in all, it is becoming very dramatic. And all in all, this is something that nobody really discusses on a global level, but also in connection, in connection to crypto, which is maybe the most important. So this is going to be the first topic. Uh, and by the way, we're talking about billions and billions of dollars in quantitative easing per month. And more exactly, we're talking about 20 billion euros per month. But I will tell you more um, in this video. Then we're going to talk about uh, Thomas Lee. You know, Thomas Lee from Fanstrat, always very bullish, always extremely, extremely positive about the markets. But uh, for the first time ever, I see him coming out with negative sentiment. And now he is worried about the Bitcoin ban in the US. Because you know that the US is now banning electric cigarettes, basically, you know, this e-cigarettes e for vaping. I'm not re really into that stuff, so I don't really know exactly what it's for, but many people have got lung cancer and diseases. So th that is why you see a potential ban from the Trump administration. And now Thomas Lee, the perma bull, is a bit worried about Bitcoin. We will be talking about that then very important topic about taxes that i also want to cover because france is dramatically changing its crypto taxes and for the first time ever in france you don't have to pay taxes on crypto crypto and then we have so many other news guys extremely welcome everyone to the show i see zauma i see michael i see brent thompson ivu blazevich bernard Alex. everyone extremely extremely welcome be sure be sure to number one smash the likes number two uh, smash the bell and if you're not subscribed by the way i see in the stats many people watch this uh, watch this channel and they're not even subscribed guys if you're not subscribed smash the subscribe button right now because you're missing out you're literally missing out on tons and tons of content each and every day also let's take a look at the market let's take a look at the market while we are at it because finally we have some green numbers bitcoin at plus 2.2 percent it is the best performing asset in the top 10 if you look at coin market cap bitcoin is really killing it in top 10 or actually Binance coin yeah you cannot really compete with Binance coin when it comes to uh, all, all, all of the things that CZ does with burning and really trying to pump up the value so Binance coin is performing better at 3.75 Looking at the top winners today, we do see Cosmos at 17, we see MadeSafe coin at 9, we do see KuCoin at 8, we do see Redcoin at 7%. So all in all, pretty positive markets. And we do, of course, always have some losers. So the biggest loser is uh, only Bitcoin at 6%, so not even that big. And also, guys, if you are trading the markets and you're not on Bybit, you definitely should get on Bybit. And you can get $110 for free if you use the link below, which I think you should do right now. And, you know, on Bybit, you can long, you can short, even the, when the market goes down, you can still make money. And you can do this with Bitcoin, you can do it with Ethereum, EOS and Ripple, uh, or XRP, however you want to call it. And you can do leverage, which is the most important thing for many people, but you should always be careful with leverage. And as you know, we do have our Halloween deal. We do have our Halloween deal in the Academy. If you go to spooky.ivontech.com, you get access to our 
all uh, to a whole academy for only one dollar and you know that the billionaires in the space are builders they, they these are the people who have actually built something and we teach you in our academy programming from scratch we teach you how to build apps on lightning network we teach you how to build apps on bitcoin on ethereum eos and so many other platforms so definitely try it out if you haven't yet now that being said, let's talk about the uh, the content, which is, of course, the European Central Bank and Mario Draghi. Now, Mario Draghi is really uh, at in his last period. He is, he is not going to be here for very long when it comes to the e ECB and being head of the ECB. You know that he's going to be replaced by Christine Lagarde in uh, in a month or so, in approximately a month, a bit more than a month. And uh, Christine Lagarde is more of a politician. We talked previously about the fact that ECB is becoming more and more political because at the end of the day they need to combine both monetary policy and fiscal policy and you know that when it comes to these policies you cannot only do uh, negative interest rates for example you cannot only do quantitative easing at the end of the day they will be become more political and do more policies when it comes to taxation and when it comes to other uh, other ways to uh, to influence the economies in the different euro ca countries but this is really another topic but it's just an interesting fact that christine lagarde is a politician and ecb will have to get political but what we're talking about today is of course the fact that um, they announced uh, a lower interest rate now they are at uh, 0.5 percent negative and previously was 0.4 percent so they're cutting interest rates and also they are announcing a basically never-ending qe it's an <laughs> it's an open-ended qe as they call it and they will be purchasing 20 billion euros worth of bonds each and every month until they feel that it is enough and who knows when that will be and this is very controversial in the EU right now and uh, in the euro area because not all countries wanted this. This is the most important thing. You realize that when the central bank is using, it's, uh, it's, it's basically th their tools in the tool chain. At the end of the day, that tool chain will run out. And when we get a recession, what kind of tools will they be using? And um, you realize that, you know, Bloomberg wrote this article about an ECB revolt. Because if you look at the map, at the map, most countries were kind of in agreement to lower the interest rates, but not all countries were in agreement to do this open-ended QE and purchase bonds at uh, uh, at 20 billion euros per month forever, basically, until they stop. But who knows when when they will stop? <laughs> it, it is like a drug addict. It's not like it will it will be easier to stop. It will only get harder and harder, and it will only. Uh, get more difficult to readjust. I see people asking what is QE? So QE is quantitative easing. Basically the government printing money to buy assets and this is done in order to boost the economy and in order to help different uh, industries and in order to make this whole ship afloat a few months more, a few years more. So really, we have two different announcements. One, the negative interest rate that we're going from minus 0.4 to minus 0.5. This makes it easier for corporations and people with good credit score and for different companies, organizations to borrow money. And the whole idea is that they should reinvest in their businesses, they should expand, they should create more economic growth. And the second announcement is QE and here's where the central bank is basically printing money and buying themselves they're buying assets themselves so there are two announcements and, and the first announcement about the interest rate all countries were basically in consensus and then you had this announcement about QE here you did have disagreements so France Germany and Estonia uh, and also um, Austria, they were not for this. They, were, they weren't really on the same page as um, uh, many other countries in the euro area. Because their argument was in fact that, hey, we cannot continue like this. We cannot continue like this in good times because bad times will come and we will not have any tools in the toolbox and you realize that this is only the beginning because at the end of the day who knows when they will stop and they will need uh, more and more drastic measures as time goes on so economists had been less certain whether the ecb would also move to relaunch its quantitative easing program which we just discussed at its september meeting which was yesterday but policymakers did so the ecb said that it would begin buying 20 billion euros a month worth of securities beginning on November the 1st and obviously 
when it comes to securities, who who holds the securities? I mean, it, it is the wealthy people and it is uh, people who are in the markets, while everyone else who is just living paycheck to paycheck, they just hold euros. So basically, their value will be inflated and given to, to people who hold these assets. And there is not a lot of transparency. I mean, th that is maybe the most frustrating thing. What exactly will that extra printed money be used for? Which kind of securities? I mean, I, I, I have some stocks. Can I ask them to buy my stock, the companies that I hold stocks in, because then they would pump. I mean, we all wish we knew which kind of securities they, they were buying and exactly what kind of uh, assets they, they will be supporting, but it's not exactly very clear how it will be. And this is one of the frustrations I think many people have right now, because it's so non-transparent. This is why we need open finance. We do need blockchain and we do need transparency at the end of the day. And so another important thing is that uh, there, there, there was this diversity of views and Draghi had to had to admit it and basically diversity of views is this that many countries were actually against quantitative easing and some of the biggest countries in the euro area such as France, Germany, Austria, uh, Estonia is not that big but they were also against it. They, they, they all said hey we don't want it. <laughs> Man take it easy we don't want it. Uh, so he said hey there was more, more diversity of views on launching the bond purchases but when it comes to negative interest rate, people were basically in agreement. And then you have on the other side of the lake, on the other side of the ocean, Mr. Trump, not very happy about this, not very happy about this. Because while uh, QE is a, a negative interest rate is not that good for the average guy, because the average guy is just losing money he has in fiat. Uh, at the same time, it is a in some way, it's also good for the average guy because he maybe can keep his job a bit longer because his corporation can get this uh, cheap money. But all in all, it is no no denial that this is done in order to boost exports. I mean, you lower interest rate when you do that, money becomes more abundant to corporations and the wealthy individuals, meaning that um, the currency will devalue. And when the currency devalues, obviously, it is easier to export because now the export companies don't have to pay that much salary because their salary is now worth less. So they, they just pay l l less money and they get paid in foreign currency when they export to, export to other countries. And then they still have to pay basically the same amount to their workers in their country. But now the, the currency is worth less. So it's, it becomes cheaper to pay off the workers. So Trump is not very happy about this. He <laughs> He's tweeting about the fact that the ECB acting quickly cuts rates 10 basis points, basically by 0.1%. Uh, they are trying and succeeding in depreciating the euro against the very strong dollar, hurting US experts. And the Fed sits and sits and sits. They get paid to borrow. Uh, they get paid to borrow money while we are paying interest. So Trump definitely wants the uh, the Fed to act. And we, we discussed it extensively in the previous episode yesterday. The fact that Trump um, called uh, Jerome Powell a bonehead and basically his colleagues, he also called them all bonehead own heads and, <laughs> and he's not very happy with their decisions. But the idea is that the central bank and the government should be separate. So we'll see if the Fed really uh, caves in and follows Trump's advice and demands or not. So definitely something very important to follow. And this is, man, this is only the beginning. I, I think we're only seeing the beginning of this because things are just getting more and more difficult. Things are just getting more and more uh, desperate, especially when you add all of this extra money. And at the end of the day, we're here in crypto community. At the end of the day, this is what is causing a lot of FOMO into gold. Look at the gold price, how it has increased during the past year. It's just insane how how well gold has performed. And also it increases FOMO in, uh, in crypto. This is just a question of time before people start understanding crypto more. And the reason why we're not seeing more FOMO into crypto is just not enough education, not enough awareness. People do not, uh, in broader circles, when it comes to broader wealth managers, they're not really treating Bitcoin yet as a valid asset class in their portfolio. And this is something that we've been discussing, uh, that we have been discussing on this channel, that in order to get real FOMO, portfolio managers need to realize that Bitcoin is mathematically perfect asset to be in their portfolio to lower risk and increase uh, gain and basically make the risk management better. But still, the education is not there yet. But 
in my view, it's just a question of time. Especially, especially if this whole house of cards collapses, and uh, especially if we see some worrisome times in the global economy, then I think people will ask twice about what is truly important and what truly holds value in our world in, and in our space. So, very important news, guys. Do follow central bank announcements. At least if you don't have time, just follow the Fed and the uh, ECB. Because the Fed and the ECB are maybe the most important in the Western world. And they really set the precedent for everyone else. Because when the ECB does something, the Swedish central bank, Riksbanken, they will adjust after the ECB. Because Sweden is is having this relationship with the ECB and we need to relate to, to the euro area first and foremost. And the, obviously our central bank is also trying to cut rates at such a pace so that we're, you know, we're one step ahead. So, so that our currency is even more cheap compared to the euro. So that our experts are even better compared to the euro area because we have cheaper currency. So all in all, they said the president for the entire world. And as a small country such as Sweden or Norway or some other other small country. I mean, at this point, it's really impossible to, to play your own game. At this point, you kind of have to play the game of the global economy and you have to follow the, the lead of the big central banks because they will influence what happens in your country and they will influence what happens with, with your currency. So therefore, at least follow those two because it does influence your life and it does influence your finances at the end of the day. Uh, Amsterdam Holland writes ECB will make Europe collapse with their criminal activities and man it's all over the world it's not only Europe it's all over the world this is coming to the US I mean the negative interest rates is just a question of time before they get to the US and Trump is begging for them to come so I think it's just a question of time and although theoretically Trump should not influence the Fed when it comes to interest rates in many ways he does. I mean, if you think about it, in many ways he does, because the Fed is all about uh, keeping economic expansion. They're, they're keeping economic expansion. And there is this interesting theory about how Trump actually does affect interest rates. Because when Trump gets on Twitter and starts tweeting about tariffs, he starts tweeting about trade war, he starts tweeting about all of these different things that might potentially slow down the economy, and they might potentially get people worried, they might potentially get people a bit uncertain about the future. I mean, he is slowing down the US economy so that the Fed basically has to lower interest rates because they want to keep the economic expansion going. If you listen to Jerome Powell, you realize that he is 100% upfront with this. They're all about keeping the expansion, keeping the economy booming. So Trump, what Trump could do, and I think he does it, he tweets a lot of FUD about trade war, about things getting tougher with China, with other countries. He makes the Fed lower interest rates, and then he makes deals with everyone, and then he's friends with everyone, and all uncertainty disappears, okay? <laughs> and I mean, I mean, this is such an interesting theory, but it might be his master plan to get re-elected until 2020. Basically, he builds up tension with China, he builds up tension with the whole world, basically, creates a lot of uncertainty in the US, makes the Fed lower interest rates, and then, you know, right before the election, he makes friends with everyone, you know, no more tension with China, you know, they make a deal, they make some, some kind of an agreement, and the Fed also has now uh, decreased interest rates, and the whole economy gets more anabola, the whole economy me gets more uh, stimuli, stimulus, and, uh, and and he goes ahead to 2020 election. I, I think it's super smart, man. At the, end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is kind of, in one way, it is the issue with four-year election cycles. Because why would you be long-term as a president, to be honest with you? Why would Trump be long-term if he wants to get re-elected? I mean, uh, everyone, I think, who wants to be re-elected would be thinking about, okay, what, what is our strategy? What is our 2020 election strategy? Uh, I think this could be a strategy, by the way. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> I think it's an interesting theory, at least. Now, this was 4D chess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it might be 4D, 4D chess. Uh, and when it comes to negotiation, I'm sure if he really needs to, he, he will make a deal with China. I mean, especially if he can make the Fed lower interest rate because everyone is so uncertain. 
Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. Let's move on to the next next topic. Our perma bull, Thomas Lee. He's always bullish. In the bull market, he's bullish. In the bear market, he's bullish. When we, when we went to 3k, he said we're gonna go to 20k. When we went to 6k, I mean, he's always bullish. Bull, bull, bull all the time. But now it's interesting. He's a bit... He bit worried. I mean, he he created this kind of a fad Twitter <laughs> the tweet that many people picked up. Basically, he talked about this vaping thing, vaping or vaping, not vaping, vaping, right? Man, I have issues uh, uh, t telling W from V. Like uh, you know, with my immigrant English, I, I still need to learn. But this is V, so th it's not vaping; it's vaping. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> vaping is getting in trouble in the U.S. So Trump administration basically wants to ban these e-cigarettes, vaping, e vaping things. Okay. Apparently, many people are dying from this, which is horrible. So, not that I'm a fan of ban banning things, but uh, the truth is that it might be a reality. So, he basically ca came out on Twitter and said that White House can issue an executive order banning anything and could even ban Bitcoin. And he said that he's not expecting it, but with the current White House, there is nothing out of bounds, nor out of reach. And I think it's true. I mean, the White House is the White House. They do whatever they want, really. So if it is the case, and then if you read the comments, I, I don't want to waste a lot of time finding the exact comment, but if you read the comments on this tweet, you find that he, they are basically discussing what will it take for Trump to potentially ban Bitcoin. I mean, do we need to go to 100K? Do we need to go to 200K? When will the US actually be serious about banning? Now, Will they? I mean, is it even of interest? Who knows? If they're smart, they would never do that. Because Bitcoin will create maybe the biggest economic growth in the 21st century. We're talking about really the digitalization and openness of the entire financial system, which is going to be huge. And you will see today, we even have the biggest bank in Spain now using uh, Ethereum blockchain in order to issue bonds, which is very, very... I mean, it's mind-blowing. We're opening up finance as we know it. But... Uh, so, in, theoretically, they should not be able to do it. Uh, and, of course, they're able, but they shouldn't be doing it if they're smart. But practically, practically, if we go to 100k and uh, the Trump administration is not happy with Bitcoin getting so much attention, I mean, you saw previously that uh, he's not a fan. <laughs> at least yet, he's not a fan. Uh, so, uh, potentially, it could be possible. But at the same time, look, at the same time, we do see other countries really taking the lead. Really taking the lead. And, uh, of course, countries such as Malta are in the lead, uh, countries such as uh, also Switzerland are in the lead, but then you have even countries such as France. I was really surprised to read this, but France is actually changing their rules on crypto taxation. Basically, they will not tax crypto to crypto trades, which is a hell. I mean, traders make a lot of trades. I mean, if you're an active trader, maybe you make three trades per day, five trades, 10 trades, really depends on your strategy. But some people do make many trades per day, and which of course amounts to a huge amount per year. Uh, and I was really surprised to read that France is actually not taxing crypto to crypto trades. Because at the end of the day, you know that France is, is not joking with their taxes. I mean, they like their taxes, just like Sweden. I mean, they, they really like taxing. <laughs> taxing maybe is a national, national sport in France, a national tradition, tax everything. And it's, by the way, like that in, in most of Europe. But now they're changing and, uh, you know, the world is global. So even if Trump or the US somehow, for some reason, wants to ban Bitcoin, you realize that France and others will jump on the boat and take everyone's Bitcoin. Basically say, hey, go to France, go to our country instead. Don't go to the US. Go in France, cash in your, your crypto in France and you can trade here. And yeah, you will have to pay tax if you cash out to fiat, but at least you don't have to pay crypto to crypto. So I think it's very positive. I think it's very positive. But the same guy who is uh, doing this uh, uh, tax removal from crypto to crypto, the same guy, which is the uh, finance minister of France, he's not very happy about Libra, <laughs> basically saying that he will block Facebook Libra in Europe. So very interesting. I mean, Libra is something that we, we're still we're still looking at and um, who knows if they really launch, they're trying their best to uh, find a solution, but they are facing a lot of issues. So we'll see if they really launch. But in France, they will have issues. In France, they will have serious issues because the, the finance minister is not on their side. 
Uh, and the same is, of course, with uh, uh, the US. I mean, when will the US really take the lead in crypto? You, you do see, for example, Jake Chervinsky, which is really a lawyer. He is very active on Twitter. He's talking about the fact that, you know, France eliminates taxes for crypto to crypto transactions. Iran does too for miners repatriating revenue, while the USA demands letters from uh, uh, from uh, crypto people, from crypto traders and crypto miners. So IRS demand, demands all of these letters. China builds its own digital currency. Many more will follow, while the US is going to launch FedNow. You know this, this uh, system that Federal Reserve is building for real-time settlement. But this is going to be finished in four years, <laughs> in 2023. So, of course, it is a competition and the US is currently losing. That is a very important statement, guys, because the world is global. The world is really now becoming smaller in many cases. It's easier to move to other countries. It's easier to trade in other countries, to take your money with you wherever you want. And so obviously nobody is stopping you from playing on the global field. And governments all across the world need to keep this in mind. And they need to be thinking about this as a global competition. So I do agree with Jake. It is 100% true. Okay, then some final news, guys, before I have to go. We do see Santander, which is a big bank in, in Spain, using Ethereum to do bonds, and you can now see exactly what is happening on the blockchain with uh, their bonds. So basically, they settled both sides of a 20 million bond trade on Ethereum. Amazing, because now it is open. I mean, we're opening up finance. It's very interesting. We're now entering a, a space where you can basically see bonds on the blockchain, and this will only accelerate. You will be able to see other kinds of debt on the blockchain. You will see, for example, uh, certificates also being on the blockchain. So all in all, we're opening up. And now people are understanding that it's just a question of time before this becomes uh, standard. A standard that everyone is using. Because if you're not having your assets on the blockchain, they're not auditable, they're not transparent, and who knows how honest you really are with your business. So, very important. Uh, and finally, finally, I thought this was interesting. There is this club, Watford Football Club. Let me know if you follow these guys. I, I'm not really into, uh, into football or soccer, but uh, these guys are apparently famous. They are in Premier League, as I understand it. They will have Bitcoin logos on their shirt sleeves this season as part of educational drive led by sports betting brand Sportsbet.io. So there you go. So you will see Bitcoin uh, in Premier League uh, this, this season, it seems like. So I think it's very important. <laughs> I mean, imagine how many millions of people will see our little B on, on, on the football footballer's arm. I think it's very good. Awareness is the most important thing. Because even if we have a better financial product, a better financial system, a better, a better way to do global finance, and of course it is Bitcoin, even if we have that, Without awareness, it will never be possible. Never be possible. All right, guys. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, bro. Thanks for donation. Uh, uh, Paul Lee. Uh, check out ban. In okay, okay, okay. So you can check out if you want that. Uh, Bitcoin ad. Yes. Yes, Fabrice. Exactly. This will be maybe the biggest Bitcoin ad we've ever seen. Uh, or in Europe. In Europe. In the US, I think Roger... I mean, many people hate Roger Ver. And he has switched size. I mean, he's no longer in Bitcoin. He's in Bitcoin Cash. But from the beginning, he was doing so many good things for Bitcoin and really spending millions of dollars on Bitcoin ads and radio and, and stuff like that. So in the US, I think we did see bigger ad budgets. But in Europe, it is very good. It's very good. Yesterday, it was boxing. Now, football. Tomorrow, hope. Exactly. So yesterday, we talked about this guy that is doing tokens and he's a famous boxer. What is his name? Like Manny something. But guys, unfortunately, unfortunately, I have to go. I have to go because we, you know that uh, a few days ago, I had these guys delivering things to me for, for the bathroom. Now I have guys coming that will, that will set up the bathroom. So unfortunately, I don't have time, but I wish you the best of, uh, of weekends. Have a great, great weekend. Enjoy it to the fullest. Uh, and uh, have a great Friday as well. It's Friday. Amazing. So have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. This is the most important uh, thing. And I'll see you all Monday. 8 a.m. on Monday. Have a great day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.